But you've been hearing throughout the day on the news bulletins that the, the counter-extremism sir Robert Simcox has claimed that London has become a no-go area for Jews every weekend. Those are his words. And his comments have been recycled across much of the media without much kind of critical lens really being applied to them. I should say before we get on to the aspect of this that I want to talk to you about, there are some serious concerns about Robin Simcock's appointment. And I think it's important we understand the comments in that context. He was put into the position by Priti Patel in 2021. And he's previously worked at the Heritage Foundation, which you will know is a very right wing think tank and associated with the installment of Donald Trump as president. He's also worked for the Henry Jackson. Jackson Society, which has been described as having an anti-Islam agenda. And in September 2019, he called for the Prime Minister to push back on accusations of Islamophobia within the Conservative Party and to be wary of calls for an internal party review. Those things that I've just told you are the tip of the iceberg, really. There's an excellent article in the Middle East Eye, which lays out all of the concerns, if you want to read up on them, about his ability to be impartial. But the questions that I want to ask you are this. First of all, do you feel that the response to these protests is different from the way other protests have been demonised or attempted to be demonised by politicians and media? So if you think about, for example, Black Lives Matter and the response to that, or Just Stop Oil or Extinction Rebellion, you know, all of those protests, they, they had a lot of publicity, a lot of condemnation. But does this feel different to you? And if so, why? 03456060973 is the number to call. You can text 84850 and tweet at LBC. And it's really that why of it that I'm particularly interested in. If there is more criticism being placed upon the ceasefire marches, more condemnation, more attempt at demonization, what's the aim? To what end are they doing that? And then I also want to talk about the fact that a a group of high profile Jewish people have written to The Telegraph, which I believe was one of the first newspapers to print Robin Simcox's comments, to clap back and to dispute this idea that London has become a a no-go area for Jews at the weekend. And one of them joins me in the studio this evening, Zach Polanski, the deputy leader of the Green Party. Um, I've read your letter to the editor of The Telegraph with interest. It's you and several other high profile Jewish people and leaders within the Jewish community who have signed it. My first thought was, if this was any other ethnic group or racial group, and we had some of them within that group saying, I feel unsafe, and some saying, actually, this is not a problem, I would always be inclined to say, let's listen to those who say we feel unsafe. So why should I feel differently about this? Well, I'd challenge the question slightly, and I really appreciate being on. Uh, I'm not saying for a second that some people don't feel unsafe. I think there are genuine and legitimate concerns from some areas of the Jewish community. I think the big problem here is anyone from the Jewish community or organisations speaking as if the Jewish community, as with any community, is one homogenous block who all feel the exact same. Mm. And I think there's a particular issue where high-profile Jews or organisations are given these platforms and then people who dispute that, like myself, are not often given a platform. And again, that's why I appreciate this interview. I think it's really important to recognise that anti-Semitism and Islamophobia are on the rise. That's not in dispute. I think it's also important to recognise, as you outlined, that when we have someone who is an advisor on counter-terrorism saying that the government needs to go bolder, they need to not worry about legal risk or they need to take higher legal risk. That is literally the definition of extremism. That is someone saying, let's regard the law, let's regard people's democratic rights and let's start to ban protest or at least make protest difficult. And then the last thing I think I'd want to say in opening is we do need to hold the Palestinian people in our hearts. This is what the real problem is is here. And I think a lot of this is a distraction from the government and frankly, from the Labour opposition who have both been complicit in, uh, first of all, not calling for a ceasefire, but still not acknowledging the collective punishment of Palestinian people, that it feels like some of this is a manufactured row to distract from what's going on in Gaza. I mean, with your other hat on as deputy leader of the the Green Party. You will know, of course, that Extinction Rebellion and Just Stop Oil also came under really heavy criticism from politicians and media alike. Does this feel different to you? In many ways, the the, um, kind of 
uh, the idea of labeling people as a hate mob or somehow uh, you know a danger to democracy does feel similar. Mm. It's really interesting that in recent weeks there's been a lot of resurgence around talking about the miners' strikes, and they often get described as heroes as they should be. But also, it wasn't around at the time. But from everything I know in history, they were demonized. They were called enemies of the people. It was it was talked as if the actions they were doing were were dangerous to democracy. This is an old, tried and tested tested de- technique by fascism, uh, racists, and also by far right governments. And they can be and all those things are not exclusive. And I think it's really important that we always challenge that. Extinction Rebellion is obviously different because that was nonviolent direct action and involved sitting on roads. I'd defend that any day, but I'm not even here to defend that today. Sure. What I'm here to defend today is a huge amount of people in this country who say we don't want to see more war. We don't want to see more innocent people dying. Yes, we want a return of hostages. It's also important to say there have been Jewish blocks, and I've been in them amongst those Palestinian marches. I've stood on the stage and spoken to people and, and said that I'm Jewish and I support this cause. And I received no animosity at all. Does that mean there is no anti-Semitism going on those marches? I've not seen it, but I can't say there aren't because mm. there's lots of people and I'm sure in any big group of people, things will happen that are uncomfortable or shouldn't be allowed. I would always call those out and I would encourage other people to, whether they're Jewish or not. But again, we've got to back, get back to the point that Palestinian people and innocent people are dying in Gaza and that's where our, our minds should be. I mean, whenever we talk about the protests, inevitably we get people co- uh, contacting the studio saying, what about Hamas? And people believe, and I'm not sure that I can support this belief, that if Hamas gave up the hostages, gave them back, allowed them to go home, that this would all be over tomorrow. And therefore, that's what the marches should be calling for. And as somebody who has been to several of these marches, I wonder if you can shed any light as to, first of all, whether that is missing from the discourse. Do people talk about Hamas and the hostages during the protests? And if so, why that is? Um, I think they're being talked increasingly so. I think it's fair to say that they've not generally been the centre of a subject because a lot of those marches are Palestinian solidarity, so they've focused on the Israeli government. Mm. I would, however, always welcome the nuance. I wouldn't even describe it as nuance, actually. The important factor that, of course, Hamas have a role to play in this. Ultimately, all the innocent people in that region deserve better than Benjamin Netanyahu, and they deserve better than Hamas. It's important to point out that not all Palestinians are Hamas, not all Israelis support the Israeli government. So these are all different communities of people in the same way that I was just describing the Jewish communities in Britain and the Muslim communities are different. I think ultimately we need to rise above the warmongers. We need to find language and uh, discourse that is compassionate, that is authentic. And yes, that will be difficult. That will create community tensions. But ultimately, peacemaking can't be about being comfortable all the time because otherwise we'd already be in peace. Peacemaking should be difficult. It should make you feel uncomfortable and it should make you push outside your comfort zone. So I think the biggest thing we need to do in this country right now is ease the community tensions that are being created between Jewish communities, Muslim communities. Uh, by the way, my my experience of these communities is actually interfaith work is going on and it's going on mm. really well. So I think a lot of it, again, is amplified by the media in ways that don't exist. But that's not to dismiss people who are fearful and concerned. But I don't think their problem is actually what's going on in the marches. I think their problem is misreporting of what's going on in the marches and amplification of toxic narratives. I'd be inclined to agree, actually. And and as you say, you can only ever see the corner that you're in. But I come into the studio, obviously, every Saturday and I see the marches and I see people holding up placards with Stars of David on them saying, you know, I'm a Jew for for Palestine. um, And I, I don't see them receiving any animosity at all. Zach Polanski, thank you so much for your time this evening. Really appreciate it.